Test one, two, test. Glenn King, can you hear me now?
cut that part out. That's enough. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. Did I hit you? No. I had oh. to. <laughs> if I lean back, it hits me right in the eye. Right in the eye. Okay. Yeah, I still have to scoot oh, over this right way. In. You want that enough room? Yeah, I'll scoot okay. over this way a little bit. I'll I'll take give it. You Well, I'll scoot over this way. I'm okay. As you scoot over, then we'll make it. More? Yeah. There? You got plenty of room? Oh, I got lots of room. Okay. That's why I said I can scoot. Keep scooting. Okay. Okay, I got four. You got four? Oh, on my computer. Oh, come over this way because you're too crowded. Am I crowding you? Okay, it's four o'clock. Mm -hmm. Do you have four o'clock? Okay. Uh, we're going to call the meeting to order. This is the regular meeting of the Desert Community College District. Board of Trustees is now called to order at 4 p.m. Uh, roll call. President Kinneman. Student Trustee Garcia. Trustee Perez. Here. Trustee Wilson. Here. Trustee Sanchez Fulton. Here. Trustee Yon. Present. Trustee Stephan. Present. And at this time, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to ask Craig Dowsett, the Interim Director of TRIO Veterans, to lead us in the pledge. Craig is a U.S. Army veteran, Arabic and Spanish linguist, with five years active duty. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And thank you for your service. Um, the agenda. 2.01, board agenda, board meeting agenda. Pursuant to government code section 54954.2B2, the board may take action on items of business not appearing on the posted agenda upon a determination by a two-thirds vote of the board. Or if less than two-thirds of the members are present, a unanimous vote of those present. That there is a need to take immediate action and that the need for action came to the attention of the local agency subsequent to the agenda being posted as specified. Um, are there any additions, corrections, or deletions to the agenda for November 13th, 2019? Then this agenda stands confirmed as presented. Minutes, 3.01, approval of regular meeting minutes. Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions to the regular meeting minutes of October 31st, 2019? If there are no corrections to the minutes, they stand approved. Um, comments from the public. 4.01, comment from the public. Persons who wish to speak to the board on any item not already on the agenda may do so at this time. There is a time limit of three minutes per person and 15 minutes per topic unless further time is granted by the board. Your comments will be timed and you will be asked to stop speaking when the timer sounds. This time limit will be doubled for members of the public utilizing a translator to ensure the non-English speaker receives the same opportunity to directly address the board unless simultaneous translation equipment is used. Please understand the board welcomes your comments but are not able to respond. And I do have one request to speak to the board. Felicitas Nunes. If you would please step forward. There's a table there with a microphone. There's some water. You can relax as much as possible. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Felicitas, and I'm here to uh, encourage you to pass the resolution for bringing ocean water to the Salton Sea area. Um, eight of the city councils have already uh, been in support of this. Right now, they're holding a study session at the city council in Coachella. Um, and uh, as you know, uh, uh, Mr. Kelly Ryan from has called a state of an emergency because of the Salton Sea situation. Especially in Salton City, there's been more reports of uh, increasing asthma, nosebleeds, skin rashes, people getting very sick. And uh, this Saturday, also, we went to the Torres Martinez, and they're also in support of getting ocean water import. I thank you very much for considering this, this subject. It's very important to all of us. 
right now the local people are suffering the most, but this is prone to, to get to all of our properties and all of our health issues to increase if we don't take care of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, uh, since we see no other speakers, um, may I, um, we're going to recess to close session from 4.05 to 5 p.m. And the board will reconvene in open session at 5 p.m.
Okay. Um. At this time, we'll reconvene from our closed session to open session. And I apologize for being a little bit late. We were trying to see what we could do to accommodate some of our audience a little bit better today. Because I know that some of these meetings can get long and tedious, and we don't want to make anybody stay unnecessarily through a whole bunch of stuff they are not interested in. So at this time, um, the first thing I need to do is report out on uh, reportable action. Um, the Board of Trustees in closed session acted to approve a notice of non-renewal for two educational administrators and to direct the administrators be notified of the Board's decision. The vote was unanimous for both administrators. And that's closed session. At this time, I'd like to request from the Board that we take um, Item 10, Consent Agenda, and move it forward so it will become item number 7. In other words, we'll be taking it at this time rather than where it normally sits. Well, right now we're just moving it forward, okay? This is a change in the order of the agenda. So is there any objection to moving consent agenda from the number 10 spot to the number 7 spot, which would mean it will come up at this time. Nope. Any questions on that? Okay. Seeing none, we will move consent agenda up to the next spot, which is where it is now. Um, so at this time, consent agenda. Um, okay. All items on the consent agenda will be considered for approval by a single vote without discussion. Any board member may request that an item be pulled from the consent agenda to be discussed and considered separately in the act action agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? And items that are pulled are pulled during the discussion. So do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Um, second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Any items to be pulled? Yes, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Mine is just an amendment to one of the consent agenda. You must agenda. be pulled. Must so be let pulled. me pull consent agenda 11, category 11. 11.02, Association Community College Trustee Board Committee nominations. Okay, that's 11.02. Any further Which pulls? 13? Yes. Pull 13.03. And pull um, consent agenda item 13.03. Okay, is there anything else that someone would like to have pulled at this time? Seeing none, um, all in favor of approving the consent agenda, student trustee, oh, student trustee is not here. Okay, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. And the motion has carried unanimously. Now we go into items pulled from the consent agenda will be added to the action um, agenda. Consent uh, item number 11.02. You pulled this, Mary Jane. Would you like to speak to it, please? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam yes, Chair. I'd like. Madam Chair, you need a motion first. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I need a motion. Mary Jane, would you like to make that motion since you pulled it? I make a motion. To approve it? To approve. Okay. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that we approve item 11.02. Could you speak to it, please? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair, um, for the opportunity to talk on this subject matter. I'm very, um, I'm very, very, very glad that our fellow board members are now going to be active in our national and state boards. So um, I think this is a wonderful item. Um, that we are that you are going to get involved um, we've been asked by the California League to get more involved in our national and have representation from California madam chair just to make it a little um, just thicker to the plot just to just put it um, I'd like to also add my name um, I don't know if you are aware but I was also nominated from the on the executive committee so um, would love to add that and I'm sorry that I did not bring that forth earlier thank you okay um, 
we'll need to have a second to the amendment. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. We need a second to that amendment. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we add Mary Jane's name um, to the nomination from the college for the ACCT board committee. Um, is there any other discussion on this? Seeing none, um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries, thank you. Madam Chair, the amendment carried. Oh, the amendment carries, Correct. I'm so sorry. No problem. I used that one totally, didn't I? Oh. Okay, we don't get many amendments. Okay, now we move on to 13. Do we need to state the amendment? Excuse me, Madam Chair. Um, uh, I for thought the I, I tried to. We were adding your name to the nomination. Yes. Thank you. Process. Okay. The next item is 13 point. Sorry to interrupt, Madam Chair. So when you take an amendment, you are, oh, the motion so was that, to that, insert the name. Now that became the main motion, correct. and now, now I you just to redo it correct. again. Correct. Thank you. Okay. So the amendment is now the main motion. I'm sorry. We don't do this very often. Um, it's now the main motion. So now we are, um, I have before you, um, we need another motion or not? No? No, ma'am. So we just vote on that as Yeah, the it was already motion. moved by Do we need to have discussion again? Right, so there any more discussion Is on the amended motion? Is there any more discussion motion? on this before we take our actual vote? No. Okay. No. I'm sorry. I rooted it all wrong for you guys. Um, so at this time, the m amendment is now the main motion that we will be nominating um, Trustee Sanchez Fulton and myself for the ACCT Board Committee, uh, which is the National Committee. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay. And now, let's see if I can get this one done right. Administration services. Oh, wait a minute. That should have been it. Hmm? No, that's 12. I'm sorry. Let me find it here. Okay. At this time, we have one more item that was pulled from the consent agenda, and that is the approval of contracts and agreements and amendments, 13.03. Um, that's correct, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. I need a motion from the board to approve this item. So moved. And I need a second. Second. Okay. And I believe we have any discussion. Anybody have any discussion that they want to bring up? Okay. We have s a group that would like to address the board on this. Oh, okay. Oh. So, uh, yes, on item number, on page 404, item two, California Indian Nations College. Uh, We've got some of our colleagues and friends that are here uh, that would like to speak to this item. Okay, and the request slip says is the California Indian Nations College. Um, we have several people here. We have Celeste Townsend. Yes. We have Teresa Mike. Thank you. We have Robert Paul. Present. Thank you. And we have Deneen Mike. She's not here yet. She's not here yet. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm <laughs> tried. And Robert. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm not that good. <laughs> um, so they are going to address us now. Thank you. First and foremost, Madam Chair, thank you for allowing us this time. Um, Board of Trustees, College of the Desert, staff and attendees, we just truly thank you for this wonderful opportunity to work with you and uh, aim for our accreditation. California Indian Nations College is going to be the first tribal college in the state of California to offer two-year degrees. And it's with your help and guidance and support that we're able to do this. We're thrilled. We've had nothing but support from the college, and we look forward to this growing and amazing opportunity. Thank you. 
Teresa's our visionary, and she's had this vision for many years, so I'm sure this is quite emotional for us and very uh, marking because we are making history. And so we're all very, very proud. Robert Paul is our president foundation. So we're all just, you know, putting our, our full effort and heart into this project. Bob and I are running the college. And uh, at first, you know, you think you can do it. And without him, I couldn't. Without the staff that we have, we couldn't. We started off with a staff of four. We now have five full-time and five part-time. And we started off with 40 students. We have 80. Yeah. So we're doubling, and this is only, we've only been in operation for one year. So thank you. And we have students who are concurrently enrolled with COD through Sherman Indian High School, which is one of four off-reservation boarding schools in the United States. So thank you so much, and we just look forward to the continued relationship and the growth and development through COD. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else in the group like to speak? I think you should. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to say that um, these actions today um, will really touch the lives of several people. Um, uh, there are 38 tribal colleges in the United States, none in California. My experience comes from Washington State, where I helped start Northwest Indian College on the Lummi Indian Reservation. And um, I was there when uh, the American Indian Higher Education Consortium was started. And a lot of those other colleges throughout the United States were started in basements, mm -hmm. in churches, in houses with broken windows. Um, at Lummi, we started in a building that was condemned twice, and we had to renovate it. And so I know there are a lot of students out there that want this education. They need it, and they want it. And I've seen the changes that can happen through education for a lot of these tribal members. So uh, that's my driving force behind putting this together, and with the help of uh, Dr. Kinneman, who came to our meetings early on. We started in 2015, and also with the help of uh, Chancellor Wilcox from UCR and the UCR staff giving us our space. So we, we didn't have to start in a condemned building or a broken down trailer or <laughs> a home without windows. We, we really have a, a nice space right now. We're outgrowing it. And uh, I think uh, with Annabelle's help, we are, you know, we're, we're going to start putting some programs together and really grow this program. So I, I just want to thank you all for your part. I know, I know what it's like to serve on a board. Um, there's a lot of hard decisions that have to be made. Mm -hmm. And uh, just admire all of you and appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you. Would anybody else in the group like to speak? Traditional greeting from the Lemmy Nation, where I am enrolled from, up in Washington State. Teresa Mike is my mother. <clears throat> the great work that's been going on for the last five years. Um, vision of my mother, who, as she informed you, helped install Northwest Indian College. To give you an idea of the impact that we're already having, we started our courses in uh, the fall of 2018, come the springtime, uh, the impact that we already had was the ability to uh, allow a few Native students to complete their bachelor's degree and their associate's degree because they were uh, concurrently enrolled 
with uh, California Indian Nations College. Something that I was not expecting at the time, but it was a great impact to them because they were able to move forward. Uh, uh, and so the students that uh, I've been able to witness sitting in class, they, they enjoy the environment of being surrounded by their own peers. Uh, so uh, working with uh, COD uh, towards this memorandum of agreement uh, to have that ability to uh, become accredited ourselves is only going to be uh, instrumental not just within the local community of the Coachella Valley, but we expect to have an impact uh, throughout the state and then uh, we believe it's going to be an impact on the nation as uh, other tribes become aware of us. Because one of the things that happened with Lummi uh, at Northwest Indian College is they have their own satellite campuses in New Mexico. So that's how long that reaches is for education, the ability to uh, not just be uh, designated in one location, but the ability to have those satellite campuses. And we'd like to have that opportunity in the future as well. Um, at this time, I'd like to thank you for your time, consideration uh, for this uh, much needed agreement uh, to assist California Indian Nations College. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. One yes. One final comment. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to express my personal thanks to Annabelle Neary and to Joel Kinnaman, who have been very helpful to us. Uh, the primary purpose of this uh, agreement, this memorandum of agreement, uh, is to set up sort of an incubation um, period for California Indian Nations College uh, as we work towards accreditation with the Accrediting Commission of Colleges and Junior Colleges. And they, along with Richard Wynn, president of the ACCJC, have been very supportive of, of our efforts. And I just wanted to point out that all of our 80 students are also concurrently enrolled here with Cal uh, College of the Desert. So we've been doing great things together. We've been increasing the native enrollment here at College of the Desert as well. And hopefully as we move forward and deepen our relationship, we will have the ability to make a positive impact on College of the Desert and the Desert Community College District as well. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Um, it's been moved and seconded. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on our board? Okay. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the um, contracts, agreements, and amendments, of which this is one of them. Madam Chair. Yes. I'm sorry. Dr. Neary's uh, oh, Dr. creating Neary. a commotion over there, yes. Okay. I'll let her speak. I was hoping uh, to do something different. Yes, yes. I have the college's signed copy uh, for Dr. Kinman to present to Teresa and Celeste. It's the official signed MOU. Okay, so let's let them vote before I hand it to them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> going back. Now we're going to take the vote. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. This was, m <coughs> excuse me, this motion carried unanimously. Now, if you would present that. To Madam Dr. Chair, Kim. would you like the privilege of a uh, uh, I would love to okay. ha accompany you in the presentation of this, if that's possible.
History being made. It's nice. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. And this concludes the consent agenda and the two items that were pulled. At this time, we'll move back to um, public updates. Thank you, Madam Chair, okay. and I. Uh, really want to thank the board for uh, moving the consent items up and allowing us all to participate in that uh, with our colleagues all right so uh, we're looking forward to an upcoming convention it's the CCLC annual convention it's going to be in Riverside on November 21 through 23rd and I did want to comment on a few things that have occurred since our last meeting the uh, Palm Springs Pride Parade uh, we had a great large contingent uh, that participated in that we also opened our Dreamer Resource Center and had a celebration a National Philanthropy Day was also held last week. We had a President's Circle reception at one of our uh, board members' homes on Friday. And then on Saturday, we had the California Indian Nations College Gathering Under the Stars uh, with our friends that were here uh, just now with us. And then following that, uh, our doctoral students uh, that Saturday night uh, attended a barbecue that was hosted by Terry O'Banion and some uh, other leaders from the community colleges. And those are my only updates. Okay, and that's pretty good for two short weeks, right? Not even two short weeks, was it? 13 days. Okay, um, at this time we'll move into the reports. And I don't want to forget anybody's report this time. Last time, unfortunately, I said that we didn't have a report from the faculty association, but they had submitted a report, and I didn't see it till after the meeting. So we did enter that in the minutes, I believe. Um, and I did want to announce that today, and I don't want to make sure that I do not forget anyone's report today. So we'll start with the Associated Students of College of the Desert, ASCOT. Thank you so much for coming to our off-campus meeting. I know it's difficult sometimes to attend these for our faculty and for our students especially. Yeah, I was unfortunately in class the last meeting, so, so sorry. my vice president reported. Uh, yes. So uh, hello, chair, board members. Dr. Hinman, uh, Executive Cabinet. There are only a few things going on this in the next couple weeks. The rest of the month is pretty empty. So, um, 
This Friday, we're hosting a table tennis tournament at the Palm Desert Campus in the amphitheater. It's going to be at 12 until the next, like, until the last match. So we're hoping it doesn't go all day, but that... It has to go all day and all night and all yeah. day. <laughs> um, on Monday, we're hosting a club rush at the Indio Campus. It's going to be from 10 to 2. And we're going to be providing food for students. And then follow like after the meeting, after the club rush, we're going to have our Ask God meeting at the Indio Campus. Uh, next weekend, we're going to Thursday, November 21st through Monday, November 25th. Um, myself and five other Ask God members are going to be attending the National Conference for Student Leadership in Orlando, Florida with Carlos which I'm very excited for, so I'll be able to attend some workshops and hopefully have some fun. That's all for my report. Uh, just want to tell everyone happy Thanksgiving and have a good rest of your November. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, um, at this time, the Auxiliary College of the Desert Foundation. Do we have anyone, no one's here to give a report? That I see. Oh, I'm sorry. Board. I, you're the only one that might Well, I, the only thing I can just uh, speak to is that uh, I mentioned we had the, uh, the event Friday evening, but also yesterday the executive committee of the foundation met, and uh, that's the most recent meeting. Again, their, their meeting was pretty quick, quick after their last one, just like ours has been, so there's really not anything to update. Thank you for that. I don't like to be Except out. that we did appoint, uh, this is a pretty significant thing, <laughs> yes. we did appoint an interim executive director oh, of the yes. foundation, yes, uh, Dr. Christine Anderson, the, uh, uh, who retired as the superintendent of Palm Springs Unified School District, and she will be serving in an interim capacity as we recruit for a full-time position. So that's really a significant thing that uh, I almost omitted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the update. Um, this time, California School Employees Association, CSEA. And I didn't get a written report. I don't know if we got one later today. Okay. Hopefully, we'll hear from them next mean, next month when we reconvene at the main campus at the regularly scheduled time. Um, College of the Desert Adjunct Association. Um, and we did get, I know we got something. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, we yeah, have we that. Did. No, not that one. No, this here. one. This one? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we do have a written report from them. I know they were going to try to send someone, but they, I guess, were unable to. But uh, please read the written reports, people. They do take a great deal of time to get these reports to us, so it would be nice if we would all um, read through them. And, and could I add that yes. this one in particular is such a positive statement mm -hmm. that if we have time, we should read it in the record. We should. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is that acceptable? It's your meeting manager. Would you like me to read it into the Please. record? Okay. I'll, I'll Would you like to do uh, that? No, I'll, I'll uh, give you my individual time to read this in the record. So. Okay. Now? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, the CODA report. At this time of year, we pause to reflect on the things that we are thankful for. We are thankful for our veterans and our active duty military and for the many sacrifices they have made for our country. We thank all of the adjunct faculty who carry the majority of the workload at the college and will continue to serve on committees despite having their pay for participation cut from the lab rate to the support rate. We want to thank Kim Dozer and Kristen Smith for allowing adjuncts to participate in the very important Guided Pathways activities. We are thankful for Dr. Neary's openness to adjuncts, questions, and issues and our willingness to take immediate action. We thank the deans for making an effort to get schedules done in compliance with the re-employment policy, and we are hopeful about better communication in this area in the future. We are thankful for finally having the ratified contract and for the hard work that went into it from both sides. And we appreciate the support received from 
um, College of the Desert Faculty Association and um, California's School Employees Association when our negotiations were floundering. And finally, we thank this board for their dedication to our students and the college. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, we will have College of the Desert Faculty Association. And I believe they said no one was going to be available. But we do have their report mm -hmm. here. If we're in the habit of reading them, we have to be fair and read all of them. No. No? Would anybody like to have it read? Mm -hmm. It is here. Please, again, take the time to read this. They do take their time to write these reports. Um, it's information that is pertinent to um, their organization and to our college. So please make sure that you review those. Next, we have the Academic Senate, Senate Report. And the word that I received was that she would not have a report for Wednesday's board meeting um, due to the fact primarily that we just had our last meeting a couple weeks ago. So, and I don't think they've had another Senate meeting. Is that correct? I don't Could be wrong on that. That was my understanding. So we don't have a report from them this time. Um, at this oh, yeah. time, their meeting is tomorrow. Their meeting is tomorrow. So we might get something in the mail. So if we do, please review that. Okay. The governing board. Uh, student trustee is unable to be here today. Trustee Perez. Thank, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'll be very brief. Um, uh, last uh, month, I attended the Latino Short Film Festival we, that we hosted on campus. And that was really neat. It was a good opportunity for our students to go out and find some really uh, cheap entertainment. It was free for all our students. So that was, that was really cool. Um, and then I'd like to congratulate and welcome Dr. Christine Anderson, um, and hopefully she'll bring some balance to the force. Um, and last but finally, uh, not least, thank you to all our veterans and to all those that have served in our military. Um, it does not go unnoticed, and thank you very much. Thank you. Trustee Wilson? Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, I really haven't had uh, an opportunity uh, to do too much um, with the passing of my mom and, uh, and her services. So um, I apologize that my uh, report is going to be very brief. But I do want to mention that um, also very pleased um, I share Trustee Perez's, um, you know, we're so happy that Christine Anderson is um, the uh, new interim executive director. Uh, she is currently a foundation, she was a foundation board member, so she was actually a board member of the foundation. Um, and so she's been on that board and she uh, has seen um, what's been happening and has, you know, so ha comes in with a good knowledge of that. Also, as President Kinnaman said, she is the uh, past superintendent for Palm Springs Unified School District. Um, so with that, she's very familiar with the Brown Act. Um, and um, she's also familiar with the foundation and how foundations work with the schools. Um, Palm Springs Unified does have their own foundation, so uh, she is familiar how, uh, on how that works. So really excited to have her on board to kind of fill in um, that void, and um, so looking forward to working with her. Uh, and then also, again, to um, uh, thank all the veterans there and all the veterans here on campus um, that have um, are going to COD. And um, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Sanchez Fulton. Uh, first of all, I want to thank um, Donnie Prince um, and the, all the staff that put on, on, I attended the College of the Desert Veterans Day ceremony a very important ceremony on our campus, thanking the men, the women, our faculty, our students that have served for our country. It was a very beautiful ceremony this year. And I just wanted to let you know, just seeing that flag and seeing all this something that we've all, the freedoms that we have is so important for our country. Um, so I wanna thank for everyone that put together, Dr. Neri, thank you for coming and everyone and all the staff who put it together. It was such a very beautiful ceremony, as always, um, just very touching. Um, the following weekend, I attended the Desert Hot Springs Veterans Day ceremony as well, and the VFW Auxiliary 
Veterans Ceremony. Um, and as well as with uh, Trustee, uh, excuse me, Chairman uh, Stefan attended, participated in the Palm Springs Veterans Parade. So it was a very, very busy day for me, the Veterans Day, but um, honoring those that have served. My aunt in particular um, th that has served in my family. So um, just wishing all the veterans and, you know, a very each and every day we should be thinking about them and those veterans that are homeless and those veterans that need mental, th th that need, th that have issues. So we have to have these types of services available for them. Um, also, just a pretty busy uh, two weeks, um, attended a very, very touching Indian um, Nations College gathering of the STARS first anniversary along with Dr. Neary, along with President Kinnaman. It was a very beautiful um, to see the students coming from the reservations and seeing all the arts and crafts. It was bustling. It was wonderful to see the amount of students there. That's what we're about. And the families that were there and the arts and crafts. It was just wonderful. This is what a community college is about. This is why I ran for office, is to see this, this participation of, of the community and um, serving those that need um, to, to help them and change. Um, also attended the opening of the Dreamer Resource Center here on campus, something that, um, wow, um, so awesome to, to participate in that and the hard work and the continued hard work that we're going to be doing, not just um, when we open it, but letting and getting the message out that we're here to serve those that don't have a voice and that we do stand for everyone, um, the students that we serve here at the college. What a beautiful, I love the color of teal, very beautiful, our Dreamer Resource Center. And those that haven't come to our Dreamers Resource Center, um, please come. It's out in the South Annex. A lot of people ask me, some of my um, constituents ask me, where is that? Well, it's the South Annex. Um, and that's where they're located. Um, so maybe better signage, I don't know, but just to let people know that we're here and we're open. And so it was really wonderful to see that. Um, uh, let's see. Participated also at the Thousand Palms uh, Chamber of Commerce Rancho Mirage Culinary. It was wonderful to see our high school students that are going to be coming to the College of the Desert and continue their education in the culinary arts. So it was wonderful to talk to our high school seniors and looking, they're looking forward to come to our state of the art culinary academy. So it was wonderful to go and to hear the students talk about our culinary uh, program. So that's really nice to, to par participate to go to. And um, first and foremost, I just wanted to I'm glad to hear about our doctoral program that we have a lot of our faculty participating and uh, maybe at a future uh, meeting. I'd love to meet everyone who is now part of that and know, get an update on how it's going. Just It would be wonderful to see what we're offering and, and get to hear our faculty, their thoughts on it. So maybe that in a future agenda item on that. And that ends my report. Looking forward to going, um, I don't know if I will be going, but this Saturday, we're partnering with the Betty Ford Clinic. Um, it's a wonderful thing that we are doing on recovery. So that's going to be um, Saturday for those um, that are welcome. It's a free community event on addiction and recovery. So I think that's wonderful that the college is partnering with the Betty Ford because we're going to have all the experts there. Thank you so much. And this ends my report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Yant. But just appreciation to staff members that did all the work to get us up here again at mm -hmm. an off-site location. Oh, yeah. It is appreciated. Oh, God, yes. Thank you. And I gave my time to the adjuncts, so that's all if for today. If you have anything else to say, nope. I'll let you say it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I want to thank my board to begin with because um, I know a little bit of flexibility sometimes is a little bit awkward, and so I appreciate the fact that you're all here and you're all able to allow us that little bit of flexibility that we had at this meeting. Um, this last month, um, I was able to participate in the Palm Springs Pride Parade. I did walk it with my giant walker. 
so I could have sat if I needed to and somebody could have pushed but that's okay I didn't have to uh, so I was really happy about that um, and then I did attend the president's circle reception and I was very glad to see how happy everyone that was part of the foundation was to be there and to hear the words by our president and by the chair of the foundation um, and it was a wonderfully attended event and it was very very happy and very nice and I wanted to thank everyone that was there for that um, also I really want to give a big um, thank you to all of our veterans um, as you know my daughter is active duty military still my son-in-law is retired military my father um, retired from the Navy my brother retired from um, the Army as well and um, I appreciate so much everything that everyone has done to ensure that we have freedoms but most of all the freedom of an education and I'm so glad that at our college we've tried to make it so accessible to everyone um, in so many different ways and I appreciate the board's efforts on that as well um, I was able to find out that the Friends of the Library is going to have a sale this Saturday um, of bookcases and tables mm -hmm. and chairs because mm -hmm. they're having their offices remodeled or their yeah. area remodeled Finally. and um, they will be selling off some of the old equipment because mm -hmm. they'll be getting all new equipment and I thought that was wonderful and I just um, some of us will be attending the state um, California Community College League's event um, a week from this weekend um, in about another week here um, and I know we'll be bringing a lot of information back from that in December um, so um, I'll conclude by wishing everyone a happy Thanksgiving and we have so much to be thankful for here at our college and so much more to work for and I enjoy working with this board tremendously Superintendent President, would you like to give your additional M report? Madam Chair, I believe I covered almost everything. I would uh, like to mm -hmm. share with you, though, that we have completed a listing of all the study sessions uh, that have been presented to the board, and then we have a schedule uh, that we've put together. It's a tentative schedule for this next year with the different topics that you have indicated you're interested in. So I'll pass that around so that you have a copy of each of those okay, okay. that's thank great you. thank you okay at this time we'll move on to public comments this is another time when we invite the public to come and speak to us um, persons who wish to speak to the board on any item may do so at this time there's a time limit of three minutes per person 15 minutes per topic unless further time is granted by the board your comments will be timed and you will be asked to stop speaking when the timer sounds. Please understand the board welcomes your comments but are not able to respond. Is there anyone else that has submitted a slip that would like to speak to the board? Is there anyone that would like to submit a slip and speak to the board? Yeah. Okay. Okay, moving on. Now we are at the action agenda. 16.01 is resolution. 11-13-19-1, do I have a motion to approve Re resolution number 11-13-19-1, a resolution of the Desert Community College District Board of Trustees in support of the Memorandum of Understanding between the County of Imperial and the County of Riverside concerning the Salton Sea as presented. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the motion um, for resolution number 11-13-19-1. Um, this is a resolution of the Desert Community College District Board of Trustees in support of the Memorandum of Understanding between the County of Imperial and the County of Riverside concerning the Salton Sea as presented. Um, any discussion? Madam Chair, yes. should the board approve this res resolution I request that copies of the resolution be sent to the board chairs of the Salton Sea Authority, the South Coast Air Quality Management District, and uh, County Supervisor Perez. Anyone else? I second Trustee Wilson's motion. Um, it's it's not a motion, it's, it's a recommendation. A oh, it's recommendation. A 
but you can second it. I second the recommendation. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, is there any further discussion? And we had earlier the public spoke to us on that. Someone from the public spoke to us on that. Um, so we have some knowledge of what we're voting on here. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a roll call vote. President Kinneman, you will conduct the roll call vote. Please. Trustee Perez. Aye. Trustee Wilson. Yes. Trustee Sanchez Fulton. Aye. Trustee Yant. Aye. Trustee Stefan. Aye. The motion carried unanimously. Thank you very much. And I know there were some people waiting to hear that vote. So, um, okay, now we move on to action item number 17.01. This is an initial reopener proposal, public hearing and adoption of reopener proposal from the College of the Desert Adjunct Association to the Desert Community College District. We now will conduct a public hearing under the Educational Employment Relations Act regarding negotiations proposals. Today's public hearing is regarding the reopener proposal from the College of the Desert Adjunct Association to the Desert Community College District. Following the public hearing, the board will take action to acknowledge College of the Desert's adjunct association proposal. In accordance with government code section 3547, all bargaining proposals are to be presented at a public meeting of a public school employer and at this purpose of today's hearing. Since today's hearing pertains to public hearings held prior to the opening of negotiations, it is not appropriate for, nor will, members of the Board of Trustees comment on any of the negotiation proposals. For the public hearing, each speaker is allowed a maximum of three minutes per topic. Fifteen minutes shall be the maximum time allotment for public speakers on any one subject, regardless of the number of speakers at any one board meeting. At the discretion of the majority of the board, these time limits may be extended. The public hearing. The Board of Trustees now opens the public hearing for the reopener proposal for negotiations from College of the Desert's Adjunct Association to the Desert Community College District. It is open. Do we have a timer up? Thank you. Would speakers who wish to address this item please come forward and state their remarks? I see a mass rush toward that table in my dreams. Oh, time is up. Are there any additional speakers who would wish to address the board on this proposal? Okay, thank you very much. I now close the public hearing. Now we move to take action on the College of the Desert's Adjunct Association proposal. It is recommended by the district that the Board of Trustees vote to acknowledge the reopener proposal from the College of the Des Desert's Adjunct Association. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The motion has carried unanimously. The Board of Trustees hereby acknowledges the reopener proposal for negotiations from College of the Desert's Adjunct Association to the Desert Community College District. The parties may hereby commence negotiations. And action of administrative services. This is designation of off-site location. Do I have a motion to approve the designation of the off-site location as presented? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the designation of off-site location. Um, 
and this will start in the spring semester of 2020. College of the Desert anticipates offering instruction in partnership with the California Indian Nations College of the 29 Palms Tribal Environmental Protection Agency located at 46200 Harrison Place in Coachella, California. Um, where did I leave off with this? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? And the motion carried unanimously. Okay. There are no action items under instruction. That brings us to our study session. Okay. And that means everyone will take out. No, nobody has the study session in front of them. So our study session. It's uh, yes. It's oh. online. It's online. So at this time, I would like to ask Dr. Daniel Martinez, our Director of Institutional Research, to come forward and present the study session. Madam Chair, esteemed board, President Kinneman, the COD executive team, students and, ex and colleagues, it's my pleasure to be here to present this information to you tonight. Um, tonight we're going to talk about the capture rate. I wanted to first show that or talk about the difference between the college going rate and the capture rate. A college going rate is usually done at the county level and it looks at all high school graduates who enroll in some form of post-secondary school. A capture rate, which as far as I know is kind of a local um, calculation, looks at high school graduates from feeder schools who enroll at specific colleges, in our case it's COD. <coughs> and the point here is just that they're not the same, they're not the same measure. The college going rate was recently restarted by the California Department of Education. And they calculate that recently that um, Riverside County college, college going rate is about 56%. Of those students, uh, sorry, just to interrupt, Mike. The, the, um, cut the file I gave you was not the most up-to-date one. Do you have the other one by chance? I'm afraid that, that uh, I gave him an old file by mistake. And so I think you may be looking at document that's different than what was being okay. presented. That's my fault and I apologize for that. Let's see. Okay. Yes, okay. So I think you have this page. Uh, I think it's page uh, three, I think it is. Um, the county, the Riverside County College going rate is 56%. All of those students, more than half, attend a California community college in Riverside County. Sorry for that interruption. So the COD capture rate looks at three school districts, it's Coachella Valley, Desert Sands, and Palm Springs. We take a look at the number of local high school graduates who attend COD. And the way we do that is we look at the number of graduates from the California Department of Education graduation file. For the, school, the three school districts, here are the capture rates for 2018. Yes, because of the um, getting the data for the high school graduates from CDE. Yes. Um, so you can see that from Coachella Valley and Desert Sands Unified School Districts, the capture rate is about the same, about 43%. And from Palm Springs Unified, it's about 32%. Those are the three school districts combined. Here is the capture rate for each of the schools in those three districts. I don't call it, I don't count all the schools. I count the public schools and, and um, I'm sorry? So no homeschool or private? That's correct, yeah. As far as I know, th there is a separate private uh, database that's available from CDE. 
I don't know about the homeschooling numbers, if that's even captured anywhere. And so you can see there's a difference by the various um, schools. <clears throat> what this number shows is a comparison of the high school graduates from those school districts. The color in red is, are the students who come to COD, and the color in yellow are those who don't. I mean, and these are based on the graduation file. You said those that don't come to CODs, but they may have gone to some other institution, though, right? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. So, do we have a break? It would be great to see that yellow. If we could break it down. Are they going to a four-year, or what are they doing? I'd like to see that. I think it would be great for us to find out the actual number in our valley. Oh. Oh. No, it, it, it would be, that would be... That would be very helpful, I believe. Be, Fantastic. Um, but to do that, we would need to establish MOUs with the school districts, or if not the schools themselves, so we can get that information. I believe that the high schools have that have agreements with the, uh, the National Student Clearinghouse. That's yes. the national organization that has that. So they have the data, mm -hmm. but we need to establish sharing of that information. I think it would be beneficial as an economist, I think it'd be beneficial to get these types of data so we can narrow it down. Are we doing, what, are they going to the four year? Or what are they doing? Are they going, you know, just to, the, the better data we have, the better we can serve our high school students. Absolutely, so I, I absolutely agree. So this is um, the enrolls versus the non-enrolls for the, at the district level and this is the same information at the high school level. So you can see there's different levels of participation from the different high schools in the Coachella Valley. Now the capture rate for the last five fall terms has been increasing um, with, with great jumps in Coachella Valley and the Desert Sands Unified and even some increases in Palm Springs. Looking at that same five-year picture by high school, you can see that at almost every high school, that's been increasing. There have been some noticeable changes. I think um, the desert, I mean, West Shores High, there's been a decrease there in terms of the rate. But NGO has been increasing. I mean, it, it's, it's a pretty impressive lineup at how, how large the increases have been over the last five fall semesters. I noticed Amistad had a great jump there. <coughs> Pardon me. What our data basically shows is that two out of every five Coachella Valley High School graduates come to COD. And that's really, that's really remarkable. It's pretty amazing. Now, this graph shows the high school graduates for the last five years, the, and this is the actual numbers. And you can see, I, was, I wanted to see the differences by high school um, and by district. The actual numbers have been relatively flat. I was a little bit surprised by that. Um, and in terms of the actual high school graduates by high school, there have even been some decreases over the last five years. Um, some recent work that we looked at showed that the number of 15 to 19 year olds in the Coachella Valley is decreasing a little bit and that could account for um, this drop in the actual number of graduates. Oh, I'm sorry. I've noticed that there's a big, um, in the last two years there's a big uh, discrepancy in the amount of students we've captured maybe I don't know, 10 to 15 percent. Could we attribute that to probably the the pledge and edge program? I would think so. And yeah. the 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 uh, promise grant too, right? Mm -hmm. um, we're we're offering. I th I think oh, that's where that's coming from. The, it's it's a huge. It's a remarkable jump. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so the decrease. Um, so even though the numbers, the actual numbers of graduates is decreasing at the high schools. 
the number, the actual number of students that we're capturing from the high schools is the increasing for many of the institutions, if not most of the institutions that we have. Um, Palm Springs High is a little bit of a decline. Um, and I was talking to somebody in counseling who said that, um, that the Cathedral Valley decline may be due to the new high school in, in the Palm Springs Unified School District. Mm -hmm. um, but but the, the actual number of students that we're getting, the raw numbers of students, is increasing pretty substantially. And that's, that's I think, is remarkable. <clears throat> and then, as you can see, when we look at the school districts over time, the actual number of captures, um, you can see that steady increase, even for the Palm Springs Unified, which has been a pretty, a relatively flat high school graduation rate. So um, we are attracting students, they are coming to us, and we think that we're gonna continue to, to capture those students. Just have a question on Desert Hot, Hot Springs High School. Is, um, I'm noticing how it went from 2014 to 2018, the increase of that. Do you, do you attain it because we have a learning center in Desert Hot Springs? Desert Hot Springs. Um, Desert Hot Springs. Right, I was looking at which, which graph it was, sorry about that. Um, I, I don't know why it would happen, but I think that makes sense. The more we're out in, and the, the, the route. more presence we have, then and the more we make it, in my opinion, what we've done at CUD is we've made it, this is my opinion, we've made it difficult for people not to go to college. Exactly. We've, we've, <laughs> with our partnerships with Sunline, with the yes. food banks that we're doing, with the Promise programs, we're making it, you're just like, come to us, can, we'll help you get here. And then when you're here, we'll help you be successful. I think that message is coming out loud, loud and clear. Yeah. Um, are there any other questions? It's what our relationship is with, with our continuation schools. Um. Could I speak to something on that? Oh, sure. Please. Share something sure. with the board? Yeah. Because I'm at a continuation high mm -hmm. school, and today we had our model continuation high school visit. Mm -hmm. And we were very well represented with two individuals from College of the Desert plus our dual enrollment. Um, one of our dual enrollment professors. I don't know if the other one was able to join from automotive later, but I know our HVAC was, professor was there. And um, I mean, that's very, very impressive when they come down to a model school and they see the community college involvement. Um, and I know that we're trying to be out there for all of the schools in all three districts when they have these types of visits and accreditation visits. Mm -hmm. So, um, I know that we have, we've had visits to the college, and uh, that's one reason why we have that increased enrollment. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the other continuation of high schools. I noticed there was some lag there. Um, there, uh, let's see, Mount San Jacinto and uh, let's see, Summit are two others. Yeah. Yeah. So. I have a question. What about, as always, I always have to speak about those non-traditional students that are homeschooled online and at the private schools, such as um, Xavier, I may be saying it wrong, high school, here in the Coachella Valley. I, they always, I always get asked that question. So, uh, our, um, <coughs> The calculation of the capture rate um, I brought with me from my previous institution. I'm not really aware of a lot of colleges who do this. I'm sure that they do. I think it was just last year, or it may have been earlier this year, that um, I discovered that the California, California Department of Education has a file on private schools. I didn't know that before. And so I'm gonna see if I can build that into our capture rate uh, information. I think it would be really great to work with also the um, archdiocese and the online accreditation, the people who do, do homeschool. There is a, an organization that can provide you that information so okay. we could see the non-traditional student. And we need to see, are we serving them as well? Yeah, I will certainly look into that. Thank you. Anything else yeah. from anyone on the board? No, looks good. And I want to thank you. I know this yes. is a lot of time goes into this. Yes. And, and uh, I think we've got some great, a lot of interest, I know, from the board because we want to reach out to as many individuals in our community as possible. Um, at this time, we do not need to go back to closed session, do we?
Madam Chair, I just wanted to thank Dr. Martinez. Oh. I, I remember when you first started working with us not yes. that long ago, and uh, you presented your first report, and we have certainly have come a long way, so thank you. Well, thank you. It's been my pleasure. It's been almost six years now. I know. I know. Uh, it, um, so uh, the time has gone by, but it's been my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for so your much. report. Um, Closed session, Dr. Kinman. I serve at the pleasure of the board, so if the board would like a closed session or I have, n I have nothing. Does anyone want to go back to closed session? Oh, thank you. Okay, <laughs> okay there's no more closed sessions today. Um, future agenda items. Uh, Trustee Perez. Uh, you have a thank list. you, Madam Chair. Uh, nothing at the moment. I just want to thank staff for putting that, that list together for us. I'm looking forward to a lot of these um, study sessions that are going to be coming up in the very near future mm -hmm. so uh, thank you staff I know we were bugging about it for a while so yes. yeah. thank you and uh, Trustee Wilson is uh, there anything else you'd like to see on this no I, I echo Trustee Perez's comments and want to again thank Julia for all her hard thank work you. and staff for helping to set up this meeting thank you Michael everybody and Trustee Sanchez Fulton. I really appreciate that we have the study session about the incarceration and our homeless wraparound services, yes, on our agenda. Um, also, the w I think we've maybe forgotten the one about what's going on with our alumni. I haven't heard an update on what's, what I've been hearing great things out in the community, but I'd like a <laughs> formal report on our numbers, what's going on. I heard it's been kind of exciting out there during the weekend so kind of wanted to get an update about that and most I'm I was just pleasantly surprised that we won an article was written on us Dr. Kinnaman Elucian Elu I may be saying it wrong I, I'm not sure Elucian report that we just got a big kudos nationally on just to get a just to let you know Il I don't know they just did a report on us on our transfer rates and they put us as a model Dr. Neary do you know uh, thank you I'm not hitting that memory cell do you have that so uh, that was based uh, so I don't know if you remember in 2018 in fall that the college won the student success award right. from the chancellor's office on our student educational planning tool and our pledge to success uh, a Lucian must have written an article based on Beautiful. that success really? and the statistics we'll in that. We have to get a copy so and we would circulate it. It, yeah. it. it was wonderful to read that on a national uh, scale for in higher education. So wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Yon. Thank you for the schedule that we've been asking mm -hmm. for. Thank you. And uh, I just want to ditto that because I know it will help out the next year's chairperson when they're trying to get their agendas together um, at this time as we move into adjournment I'd like to close today's board meeting in honor of Ronald M Owen who passed away last week after a battle with mesothelioma Ron was well known for his philanthropic efforts across Southern California and more specifically here within the Coachella Valley he served as president and chairman of the board for the H.N. and Francis Berger Foundation from 1988 until retiring earlier this year. Ron was an ardent supporter of education and a true friend of College of the Desert. Under his leadership, the Berger Foundation has provided financial support for nursing programs, the McCarthy Family Child Development and Training Center, math and science <coughs> programs, and creating smart classrooms, including the Berger Faculty Innovation Center, which opened in 2015. Every month, more than 1,000 visits are made to the center by faculty as they utilize cutting edge technology to create new curriculum, incorporate technological advances into the classroom, and add innovation to their teaching, all leading to improved student success outcomes for College of the Desert students. We will miss Ron and deeply appreciate his contributions he made to the college. Our thoughts are with his family. Mm -hmm. Seeing as there's no more business on our agenda, are there any objections to adjourning the meeting? If no objections, this meeting is adjourned. Have a very happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. It's 619. Wow. <laughs>